for I think maybe two years now, maybe a year. I think a year. I've been I've I signed up to the Daily Wire Plus and I signed up to Mug Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daily Wire Plus is obviously you've seen Matt Walsh, Brett Cooper, Ben Shapiro, all those guys. Um, and Mug Club is owned by Stephen Crowder's lot, uh, which is Louder with Crowder on YouTube. And they're two of the biggest conservative voices on the internet. And they're both very necessary because even though I have a lot of left-leaning views, I think it's very, very important that there's not a monopoly on what people can talk about. YouTube is basically is a left-leaning company. We, we, we already know that. They basically offer an alternative, which I think is good. Regardless of what you think about them, you can't want everyone to be in the same place it's not good for one company to have complete control yeah so recently uh steven crowder who is the single biggest uh conservative person on youtube i think i think he's close to six million uh subscribers i think the only person that's bigger than him is jordan peterson but i don't know if you would put jordan peterson in that same bracket even though he's signed to the daily wire he, his uh, contract was up with The Blaze, which is another company that, was, that he was working with. He got sent an offer by Ben, Sh- not Ben Shapiro, sorry, um, Jeremy Boring, who is the CEO of Daily Wire. And Stephen didn't like the offer. So what Stephen did is he went onto his YouTube channel and basically blasted The Daily Wire without saying their name. But he said enough for everyone to work out who he was talking about. That was one thing. I thought it was a little bit weird that he was... He was making some like talent, talent um, contracts are very confidential things. You're not supposed to discuss them out in the open. Yeah. So he fired the first shot, which, you know, he's well, he's within his rights to do it. If he doesn't like something, he can. And he has ideas of how big tech is and big con, which is that the big conservative side of it. He can voice his opinions. Jeremy Boring fired back on the Daily Wire Plus his YouTube channel. Basically, it's a one hour video of him breaking down the contract. Long story short, he goes through everything on the contract, everything wow. of relevance. They were offering Stephen Crowder $50 million to sign to them. Um, but obviously there were a couple of stipulations, but it was an, it was an open-ended conversation. So there was going to be room for Stephen Crowder to say, I don't like this, but I like that. That's how negotiations work, right? You push back on certain yeah. things. They go on for months. Uh, Brett Cooper was talking about the fact that when she signed to the Daily Wire, she was uh, going back and forth with them for five months, I think. Wow. That's how negotiations work when you're dealing yeah. with big money. And, and obviously, like, Stephen Crowder is, is probably worth every penny. He is very, very important for the conservative movement on YouTube and just on the internet in general. My problem really came with what he did after. He made another video, which was a response video to Jeremy Boring's video. So this is now the second video he's making. And in this video... He plays a voice recording of a private conversation between him and Jeremy Jeremy Boring on the phone. They don't get deals that... They should be wage slaves for a little bit. Come over and make a salary and grow their brand. They should be wage slaves for a little bit. They should be wage slaves for a little bit. Now, Jeremy and Stephen are friends. And my problem with this is something that I don't think a lot of people are pointing out. If I called you Mm -hmm. because I had a problem with you and I recorded the conversation, wouldn't it be fair to say that I knew I was going to record that conversation so I am going to paint myself in the best light possible during that conversation Mm -hmm. and the person on the other end of the phone who thinks they're talking to their friend is going to maybe say something wild because they're talking to their friend. We say wild shit behind the camera all the time because yeah. it's it's a safe environment to do it. We're not going to get in trouble. We know we're joking. We know what we're saying is not a big deal. And I understand that it's business and you're, neg- you're negotiating a contract and the idea that you have of, uh, of what the company should be or what the contract should look like is different. But to record your friend and then put them on the internet like that, it, I, I can't get behind that. Mm-mm. Now, I like Steven Crowder. I like the Daily Wire, most of them anyway. I I don't I don't like what Stephen's done. No, but would you really even call that a friend if they've done that to you? No, I I think I think that was pretty slimy. Like he would have n- known his intention behind that completely. A hundred percent. If this was a conversation that was recorded against both of their wills and neither of them knew, then I could take the conversation as more genuine. Yeah. But because Stephen recorded that conversation and he knew, he knew he was going to put that video out mm. because 
he uh, trademarked a stop big con back in December when his contract was up and they were already negotiating a deal back then. Mm. Stephen didn't like how it was being negotiated back then. And now fast forward, we're towards the end of January, he releases this audio. So this was premeditated. Now I understand you separate, uh, you don't, you, most of the time people would advise you don't go into business with your friends because it can get ugly. But I get this, nervous about that all the time, by the way. Well, with us? <laughs> yeah. No, you're lucky because I'm easy going. <laughs> I text yeah, you all the time, like, do you want to film today? Yeah. You say, no, I'm like, cool, we'll do another day. But in general, I would say don't get into business with your friends either mm. because it, it does have the, it does tend to get ugly when you mix business with pleasure. Yeah. You're not always going to agree on everything as well. And yeah, it just gets a bit techy. Yeah. That we, we've got a good working relationship. Yeah. We don't like, because we, I, I knew about you beforehand, but we weren't friends before. We've become friends now. But we see each other to film Midnight Rubbish and then I don't see you for a week. Mm -hmm. um, that's not to say I wouldn't hang out with you. No, I know that. But I'm just saying, like, I think that we're both, to be honest with you, I don't know what your opinion is of me, but I think we're both easygoing and both reasonable. So, like, if you was to talk to me on a serious level, like, Michael's had words with me before about certain things. And I've, I've taken it on board and listened. I haven't exactly argued back. Do you know what I mean? Save that for another video. But <laughs> my point is, is that even though they were talking about a contract, I don't think what Stephen did was the right thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think you out a conversation that Jeremy Boring had no idea was being recorded to try and make him look bad. Mm. Because in that conversation, Jeremy Boring said that, uh, you know, obviously not every talent is like Stephen Crowder. Not everyone's got almost 6 million subscribers. Not everyone's got a gigantic following off of YouTube. So they might sign someone like Brett Cooper who didn't have a following before. No one knew, really knew who she was. She was in Hollywood, but no, she was, I think she just walked away from it because she didn't like the way it operated. She had 7,000 subscribers when she was on YouTube. She didn't have anything. And the Daily Wire took a chance on her. Now, it would be fair to call her a wage slave, the same way we would be considered wage slaves as well. We go to work, we're trying to build ourselves up. It, Jeremy Boring referred to younger talent as wage slave to his friend in private. Bench talent, young talent, they don't get like this so they, get, they don't get they, deals that they can be wage slaves for a little bit come over and make a salary and grow their brand that you then own well i own parts of it i don't own it they can when their contract's up they can still go out and they'll still be famous they can keep doing their show so go do a show somewhere else they'll be in a far 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 better place you help to make them no, not long as not this contract. This contract owns it in perpetuity even after the contract. You're paying a lease but getting ownership. That's what this contract is. On, on the content that we paid to produce, yeah. Which is just another way of saying you have to work your way up to become somebody like Steven Crowder, like Ben Shapiro, like Matt Walsh, and like Brett Cooper now who's going towards 2 million subscribers. That comes with hard work. So the wider public, when they hear wage slave coming from a CEO, how do you think that's going to look? Mm. It makes it look like he's authoritarian, that he's no better than the people over at Disney or YouTube or whoever else they would they would call authoritarian with their their way of doing business. And this is like fractured the the conservative uh, movement on YouTube because those are the two biggest, and it's like mum and dad are fighting. And I wanted to give my two cents in it because I've seen so many people talking about it. I think that sometimes people can put contracts across that you don't like, and that's fine. I personally didn't have a problem with what the Daily Wire put across because Stephen's biggest problem was that he was going to be penalized if he was demonetized. That could have been negotiated. But at the end of the day, if we don't produce content, YouTube doesn't pay us. If Stephen doesn't produce content for the Daily Wire, the Daily Wire is not going to pay him for content that doesn't exist. Now, it's, it would be fair to say Stephen's going to carry over all of his Mug Club subscribers from his own website to become a part of the Daily Wire. That's true. But you would negotiate that in the contract. You would say, what about this? Outing your friend, regardless of it being business, is a scumbag thing to do. That it just is. And I like Stephen Crowder. I like the work that Stephen Crowder's done. I think he's extremely important. I think Change My Mind is one of the best YouTube segments I've ever seen. So I'm not throwing Louder with Crowder under the bus. I'm still going to watch it. And I'm still going to watch The Daily Wire. I, enjoy the, I, enjoy, I enjoyed Exodus with Jordan Peterson. We watched What is a Woman. You know, like both sides are doing good and necessary work. So it's a shame to see them fighting. But a lot of people have taken Stephen's side on this because it's, it's him versus a machine. The Daily Wire is a machine, right? But it's not, a, it's not that they're a bad thing. I think the contract they sent him was pretty good. Maybe it's not up to par of a talent like Stephen Crowder, but again, that can be, neg that can be negotiated. 
to see them throwing each other, not so much the Daily Wire. I think now they're f- they're they're clapping back now. The people working that are clapping back at him. But to see this all unfolding is is pretty. It's a shame because mm. they're the two biggest movements, and you need you need an alternative voice, alternative voice to the mainstream, whether you like them or not. And I would say the same thing if the conservatives took over the media and they took over Silicon Valley. I would say you you would need someone like Destiny, for example. Destiny is a very rational. Uh, intelligent person who I'm more than happy to sit and listen to whether I agree with him or not so that's all I really want to say and I'm not on Stephen's side on this that's not me saying I'm going to unsubscribe from Mug Club I'm, I'm not I, I enjoy what Stephen does and I enjoy what Daily Wire does but you don't do that to your friends